so much for the space that you're offering for us to be in conversation around this. Um, yeah, I just wanted to speak to and add to this, like so much of what I think white people's work is around getting a better assessment of safety um, because these conversations can be really activating as white people when we haven't been having these conversations. And so I think it can activate our systems and make us feel as though we are unsafe uh, when we actually are safe and we're just feeling you know, activated and uncomfortable. So I think so much of the work that we have to do um, is around learning how to like regulate our systems through these conversations so that we can lean into conversations with our bosses or conversation with our friends or our clients or whatever and 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 have be grounded in the reality that we're actually incredibly safe uh, within this conversation but it's just deeply uncomfortable because those feel yeah. like different things to me yeah that's a good point thank you for saying that safe but uncomfortable and i think um danny also made a point to it helps him to say instead of safely uh, looking at it as brave conversations right um again goes with the word like courageous so thank you, Riley, for saying that as well. Uh, I guess Ashley. Ashley. Yeah, Ashley. Uh -huh. I don't know where Ashley is. Oh, there you are, Ashley. <laughs> Hi, so can everyone hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. So um, one of the things I think I struggle with is when I come into situations where I want to speak up and I want to say something, but I have kind of this tug of war in my mind um, where I don't want to overstep or I don't want to suppress another person's voice. So if there is a person of color, um, whether it be you know African-American or Hispanic Latino or you know Native American, I don't want to feel as a white woman or a white person that I am overshadowing or over talking them. So I feel like a lot of times that kind of keeps me from saying something. Um, if I feel like they're not saying something, I tend to keep my mouth shut. Um, and that is something that I feel like I struggle with. And a lot of times that keeps me from speaking up because I don't know if I should step in and kind of be that voice and kind of confront the person or if that is me using my privilege to do that. Um, so that's something that I personally struggle with a little bit and is something that I've been trying to work on and kind of finding that balance of, you know, do I speak up or is that me kind of pushing their voice down? Because I don't want to do that either. So that's something that I know I personally struggle with. Um, so I don't know if that's something that you have any like thoughts on or advice or if that's something yeah. that you discussed. Yeah, that's a good question too, or a good statement, um, Ashley. Cause now what I hear Ashley saying is a little bit different than, well, the opposite of what Kel and then uh, Colleen had had said, right? The idea that, okay, now it's, it's, it's the person sitting over there. Now, if I speak, am I using my privilege and all of a sudden moving them out the way? But now I'm bringing my voice as a white woman, which is part of the issue and not letting the person of color speak for themselves. But, and I, and again, you can nod your heads because I'm, I'm looking at you too to see if anybody else also feels that way. But I think I'm, I'm again, getting some head nods. But I think that kind of goes back to a little bit of what Danny was saying again of also that brave space. Not every conversation is safe, but there are spaces where, and I'll admit for myself that I've been in conversation that I would have loved somebody else to speak up because I, it's not safe for me. Again, when I didn't work for myself, if I speak up now, will there be repercussions on me? You know, or you're just the angry black woman who's sitting here talking like, woo, woo. you always say that everything's about race. Here you go. Like, you know what I mean? But to also know somebody else at the table also says, OK, that's where that word like ally comes in. OK, now, OK, now you can also speak. It's not just me. They see that somebody who's not like me is also having this same experience. So I wouldn't see it as you meet me like, you know, move out of the way, Latoya, I got this for every black woman. Like <laughs> Now you're going forward more so as, you know, listen, that wasn't right. And I can imagine like, boom, boom, boom. Or that made me feel the way that wasn't right. But that gives space for the person next to you say, okay, you know what? 
your bravery allows me to speak up and now I can also feel brave. But sometimes it's just the idea of the repercussions that will come back and the idea that people of color feel dehumanized at times where you're not even listening to my experience. And then some of that also is like a trauma response. Like, listen, I've, I've, cried, I've said this before, nobody listens. And so I'm aching over here, hoping somebody will hear me or hoping somebody will see it. So yeah, Ashley, again, like, I think that's, I think, of course you gotta use your judgment, but I think that is great space to step up and speak. Okay, great. Um, and thank you, Heather, for finding that art, the thing, the um, link to the article, that was good. Um, and if anybody, um, it, okay. So Angie, sometimes I can't, I can't find you guys quickly. I'm trying to find you as quickly as I can. Whitney, do you see Angie? Cause she wants to say something. Oh, you ready to speak Angie? Angie, let's see. There you yes, go. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, can, can you guys see me? No, we can hear you though. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm actually driving on my way to a meeting, but I do uh, okay. need, to part, <laughs> need to be a part of this. And I have my mask on, so I'm gonna remove it because I am in my vehicle. Just really sure, quickly. Sure. Um, it's it pretty much trifold. I just kind of wanted to say in terms of the, the, the systemic racism that occurs, certainly just kind of just thinking about my daughter who is 16 right now, who had recently come to me and told me, you know, that mama, while I was in, you know, second grade, you know, being in a class full of white kids, you know, I really felt out of place. And not just because of, of my not seeing someone who looked like me, but most times my teachers made me feel as if I wasn't a part and that I was different. You know, they would often overlook her and call on other kids and things of that nature. And so she really felt badly about herself. But I, I thank God that I, I, I am the woman that God has created me to be. And I was able to really work with her in, in regards to that. And, and now she's doing a lot of positive affirmation things, a lot of positive uh, motivational speaking to her peers and things of that nature. So I just wanted to put that out there. The other thing is I appreciate, I believe it was Kyle, Kyle I'm sorry if I, I pronounced your name wrong. Um, yeah, yes. She indicated in terms of a voice and, and, and after everything happened uh, with George Floyd and, and, and all of the things of that nature. I, I teach at the University of St. Thomas and I had a student, a white lady who actually I, I gave him an assignment for a reflection paper. And that's what she wrote her reflection on. She indicated that she was glad to be able to take uh, the course and to learn some new things. She said, but you know, she's really embarrassed because being raised and growing up in the home of her, her grandfather, she wasn't allowed to watch the Cosby show. And she saw how he treated, you know, black folk and, you know, just the thought process of everything and how things went. She never really realized that she was being racist herself in how she dealt with people and how she talked with people. She said mm. she didn't realize that she was creating pain and hurt until after she said what she said and saw the reactions of those people who was on the receiving end. I certainly applauded her for allowing herself to be vulnerable and, and speaking on that and, and not covering it up. And as a relate uh, to that, as a result of that, she's now, you know, participating in counseling services to address her issues. So when we talk about voice and talking about wanting to be knowledgeable and, and not knowing, sometimes things are, you know, where we are learned, you know, we're taught certain things. And so sometimes we have to unlearn the things that we've learned. Yeah. And yeah. I tremendously, you know, I applauded her uh, uh, for that. Um, yeah. And, and then the other thing, and I, I'm gonna be real quick. I'm gonna get out you guys. Okay, we got a couple. Uh, we, we got a couple more minutes, so okay, okay. we gotta the, wrap up in a okay. moment. All right. The the other thing is, as far as with even if we're talking about mental health, what we have to look at too within our own uh, force that we have in terms of mental health, that you know, there's uh, systemic racism in it as well. When we have you know patients mm -hmm. or clients who are going to psychiatrists and being diagnosed, you find like five times more likely that black folk are being diagnosed with schizophrenia and bipolar, more of the intensive uh, diagnoses. So certainly we have yeah. to kind of look into that and create that form for that, for, for that as well. I truly, truly yeah. appreciate you, uh, uh, Ms. Latoya, for yes, you know, bringing this on. And we, we definitely have to bring it harder and bigger, you know, as we continue to go. And like you said, we can't get quiet on it. We have to bring it to the forefront because if we become yeah. silent, then we're saying it is okay. We have to make okay. as much noise as we can about the process. Thank yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, guys. Thank it's you. good. No, it's good. Thank you. And and um, thank you for bringing that up, Angie, because Angie makes a good point, too. And 
uh, just the idea of actually the the care that we provide. I touched on it when it came to young girls, but in general, when anybody in our office. And um, again, I spoke to some therapists that are doing some work around trauma and understanding what trauma is and helping people see like, okay, how do we do this anti-racist work even in anything that we do in all the practices that we provide? That if you come in and you are a person of color and you're angry, you're not automatically bipolar like that you know that's not stamped on you and now go forth and now let me give you some medication but understanding how we treat anybody and are we providing the best possible care and not just doing societal labels on people and, and having them go their way um but we are about to wrap up in a moment i appreciate everybody jennifer um i'm not sure if we're able to get to your your story is that okay or if you can tell it in 30 seconds you're okay okay i don't know what you said better Okay, so so listen, this is what I would, I'm hoping everybody could do. If you can, my email is up there at the top of the chat, it's Latoya at the practice of the practice.com. I really wanna hear your voices because I know we only have an hour for the webinar um, and I love everybody that had the opportunity to speak up or offer in the trap chat, but I want, not the trap, but the chat, but to, if you can email me, and that we can have those individual conversations because I would really love, and now we can do it through email, but I'd love to hop on, sorry, Jennifer, but I'd love to hop on a Zoom. I know you're not a Zoom fan anymore, but a Zoom or anything, or it could be phone, but we can talk and I can hear your voice. And then from there, we can be intentional about what we can create. So these things don't pop up every so often, but we can have that community in that space uh, we can go for there. If you're looking for more one-to-one -one consulting work individually or with your practice, like email me and let's talk about what that looks like, how I can help you individually or how I can help your practice as a whole or if there's an organization you're involved in, we can go forward. But I can't do it effectively until I hear your voices. So please email me, latoya at practiceofthepractice.com. Um, okay, and there's some other things in the chat if you wanna copy that as well. Uh, thank you, Whitney, for letting people in. Uh, and I appreciate everybody. So I don't want to keep you any longer. Make sure you go read those articles. The Newsweek one especially. Well, yeah, because I said that, Dr. Eric Smith. But also read the one in the New York Times about the um, the, the girls as well. That's That one's pretty heavy and it's pretty important. And then look out for the podcast takeover where we hear some more voices, okay? So I'm looking out for your emails. I'm going to run to my, my email thing right now. And I'm going to look it up. And I'm going to start responding because I really want to hear from everybody. All right? Well, thank you all so much. Enjoy your day. Have a great day. And let's keep pushing. We're going to push together. All right. Thanks.